There are five hardware resources to consider when building a cluster. In order of impact, these are your disk drives, your node's RAM, the node's CPUs, the number of nodes, and the network bandwidth. Let's talk about each of these. Let's first talk about what not to use. Do not use a SAN, NAS, or NFS. Your IT people may tell you they are fast, but don't believe them. You only want direct attached storage. SSD is what you want, and you want SSD for two reasons, low latency and no moving parts. This means your cluster will be fast and reliable. Rotating drives are a cheaper solution, but you get what you pay for. Rotating drives may be appropriate for some applications, but only when you need a lot of inexpensive storage. But you won't get the performance you would from SSD. So when can I use a rotating disk? Probably never. You might get by with it for write-only type of applications, but if you try to do this, load up your nodes with lots of RAM to optimize for caching. When it comes to memory, more is obviously better. We don't allocate all the memory to Apache Cassandra process, but the kernel will use the memory for caching. Here are some recommendations. A minimum of 16 gigs for production, but you can get by with a little less for development machines. Apache Cassandra takes advantage of many processors, so once again, more is better. But the best bang for your buck right now is 16 cores for production systems. You can get by with fewer in development environments. Also, remember, DSE node implementations use strategy known as thread per core, which optimizes core performance. When it comes to network bandwidth, use gigabit or better. Of course, you are going to want to bind your OS interfaces to separate NICs to avoid NIC contention. Also, remember that your nodes use native transport address for native protocols and listen address for internal storage protocol. Both of these are set in the Cassandra YAML file.